that the temperature is a little bit chilly for July 16th, 2017. Uh, in fact, that's what it would be. There was a story in the Los Angeles Times yesterday that said, without leap year, without the Gregorian calendar bringing about leap year, if we had not had that extra day every four years, that we would be in the middle of July 2017 right now. And no, this would not be July weather. So we'd have some cranky people out there if that was the case. Seven minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for joining me. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I can tell you a little bit about what we've got coming up in the show today. He's not spending the entire hour with us. It's not his, his usual visit, but we do expect to be joined by Kelton Hatch from Idaho Fish and Game. He's coming by for a few minutes after 9 o'clock, and he'll be talking with us about an event that he uh, he has coming up and it would be of interest to you as well. So that's on the way. Also, Randy Staples will join us between 8.40 and 9 o'clock this morning. If you saw Randy's column yesterday, and of course it's also available at Idaho Weekly Briefing, he is saying that there is a, beginning to see at least a rift developing among not Republicans so much in Idaho, but a rift developing among conservatives. And uh, and some state legislators, at least one, not happy about that and not happy about the direction some conservatives are taking. I think it's only natural when you consider that when it comes to the presidential race this year, Republicans, especially conservative Republicans, are all over the place. And, And, you know, there's that fight going on nationwide about what it really means to be a conservative. So we'll get to all of that. That's coming up a little later in the show. But I had a few things I wanted to share with you because... We have not spent anywhere near as much time on this program in the last couple of months talking about the refugee resettlement program as we did for about seven or eight months going back to last spring. Partly that's because I think a great many people who were saying, you know, we need to have a better, uh, more public input, we need to have our politicians paying more attention to this, we got that. The political class in Idaho didn't about face following the the shootings, the massacre in Paris, as well as what happened in San Bernardino, California. That does not mean that the program is finished. It still goes on. A lot will depend on our election year coming up. A new president perhaps could say, you know what, we need to rethink this, and from the top down in Washington, we could have that impact across the country. Why do I bring that up today? Because this is. I was looking over the Times News website before I came into work this morning, Uh, Totona Dunlop writing this story, and this is the headline, Refugees struggle to adapt to Idaho life as resettlement opposition wanes. Now, I'm not aware that resettlement opposition has waned. Now, let's go back for a moment. If you happen to be writing something for the Internet, and I pulled these off the Internet, not from the hard copy of the paper. If you're writing something for the Internet, sometimes you look for clickbait. Clickbait is what encourages people who are like scanning sometimes dozens, if not hundreds of stories online, to click on the story. I, I, look, I'll tell you what. If I go to my website, newsradio1310.com, well, I guess I should say our website. I have some coworkers who might resent my website. But if you go there, I've discovered that if you put the word Trump in a, in a headline, you're going to get a lot more clicks. If you put the word Syrian or Islam or Muslim, you will get a great many more clicks than if you just said presidential race heats up. Or refugees are of concern. And, and so you understand that in the modern world, that's how this works. Now, if you went to the city council meeting last week, and one of our staff members, uh, Andrew Weeks, did exactly that, former newspaper reporter, I should point out, and in fact, a one-time newspaper editor. Andrew went to the meeting last week, and he came back, and he said that most of the people who were speaking on this issue were overwhelmingly opposed to Syrian refugee resettlement. And it may have been one person at the meeting who spoke in favor of it, but everybody else there was taking the other side. And there is still a referendum coming on this in May. And if, if you can extrapolate, Twin Falls is probably as a county, really most of Idaho, right now feeling pretty much the way the rest of the country is. And that means PO'd. Do I need to explain what PO'd mean? A peeved. We'll say that. How's that? That'll make that a little cleaner. And so, so I wanted to mention this off the start of the program today because I don't think it's, it's gone away. On the other hand, I haven't run into anyone who's really had an issue with people coming here from certain countries. For instance, um, I, I went to, uh, one day I went to the Antiochian church for, uh, for the mass there just to see what it was like. I haven't been into a, an Eastern church in ages. 
and I noticed a lot of people who are at the service there, and they happen to be from other parts of the world, and they seem to be incredibly devout people. I was very impressed. I'm just going to tell you that, 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 that when I see people who are, who, are, who are taking their shoes off before they enter a church because they consider it that holy, those are good people. And we walk around town and we see people from a lot of different parts of the world. Nobody, to my knowledge, ever really had much of an, a, a, a grievance with anybody who might have come here who'd been Chaldean, or those are Christians who were out of Iraq, or anyone who may have come here who, uh, who fled the, uh, the Civil War in the Balkans back in the 1990s. So it's not a, to, to say this, it, it gives the impression that people here have a blanket, uh, that there was a group that had a, a blanket opposition to all refugees coming here. And that's not the case. The point always was we wanted to be sure about them coming from one part of the world because of the, the fact that that part of the world right now is destroyed by civil war. We don't even know who a lot of these people are. You could walk through the rubble, pick up somebody else's ID, claim to be that person, and you could pass with flying colors if you don't do anything wrong while you're in the holding pen. And many of them are in refugee camps in other parts of the world. So I, I think it's a little premature to say that this has waned. People are still concerned about who's coming here. And yes, they're probably a lot less concerned about somebody who's coming here from, I don't know, Albania or Bosnia or or who might be Croatian, anybody from that part of the world. The Syrian situation, though, is alarming. And in fact, I just read over the weekend that there was a shipment, supposedly of furniture that arrived in Greece, but it wasn't furniture. It turned out to be uh, weapons for certain people who were going to get their instructions to go shoot things up. Gosh, funny how that might, uh, might upset us. Uh, because, well, we're told, you know, if, if, if it would probably be good for us to die, I guess, because uh, our people have been oppressors for so long, it will only equalize things. And then I happen to come across this headline side by side with the first one, Principal Blocks Twin Falls High Story on Immigrants, uh, Julie Wooten, the writer. Twin Falls High School students prepared a story about perceptions toward local immigrants for a recent edition of the Bruin News, but weren't allowed to publish it. School principal Dan Vaught made the decision after some students and parents raised concerns about a survey created by a student journalist asking for student opinions about Muslims and Islamophobia in the United States. I'm not going to criticize him today. I'll put it this way. This is a healthy discussion for young people to have, too. We used to have these types of discussion when I was in high school. We had, uh, we had social studies classes, and it was very common to get into these breakdowns. Uh, we had a, a, a teacher in one class, in my 11th grade history class, Chuck Williams. Uh, he had been a, a colonel in the U.S. Army. And Mr. Williams always liked to talk about these things, get them out there, let people get their opinions out. And it was, I thought, a wonderful exchange for a group of teenagers. On the other hand, uh, the principal at the school has to also be concerned about keeping order and the like. And if somebody somewhere doesn't like, perhaps, if if 3% say I've got a problem with this, then all of a sudden you, you, you you could have somebody, you know, trying to raise some tensions and the like. School systems, if I'm not going to criticize them for what decisions they've made in this. I'm just telling you, I I don't think that it would have been as bad as perhaps people would have perceived it would be. Uh, And students do have opinions, and they can always air them other places. You don't necessarily have to air them in school. You have lots of opportunities in this day with the Internet to air opinions well in millions of places. So moving on from all of that, it's 815. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. We have 37. We will see 60-degree temperatures later this week. I will not complain about that. No, it's not July, but perhaps we're getting a little closer to it. Then I came across this from a writer by the name of Ken Abraham. Who is Ken Abraham? Ken Abraham used to be a prosecutor, uh, I believe, in, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a federal attorney general's office many, many years ago. Then Ken Abraham ran afoul of the law himself and ended up serving prison time, not for anything violent, you know, it was more along the lines of, uh, who was the fellow? Chuck, McC- was it, was it um, Colson? Chuck Colson, who was involved in Watergate, went to prison, ended up becoming a, a, a you know, born-again Christian, and following his release from prison, became one of the best-known evangelical leaders in the country. Ken Abraham is very much like that. Ken Abraham is now out of prison, and, and he, he writes for a various, a various Christian groups. But he is, he's got a piece, I saw this at LinkedIn today, uh, I know Ken through some mutual friends, and he was on a radio program I hosted a few years ago. But he says the problem with illegal immigration and refugees all over the world is it isn't so much about compassion. It's about profit. What's he talking about? Private prisons and private holding centers. 
He says, a great many of these people who are on the move around the world are being held by private companies. These companies are authorized by governments in places like the United States, Norway, England, Australia, all over the world. They are authorized to run these centers because the government says, well, maybe you can do it more efficiently. Name us a price. Three or four of these companies bid. The government should go with the lowest bidder the way this usually works. And then that company runs these operations. But these are people who are making money off misery. Now, I'm not done yet. Sometimes the so-called not-for-profits, and we have a lot of them in this country that are working as wings of various large churches, they come along and they get involved and they get checks as well for facilitating resettlement and for facilitating you know, housing and, and relocation and, uh, and sometimes even holding these people in areas until all of this can be settled. There's big bucks in all of that because you know what? Those Lutherans who are running that program nationwide, they're not doing it for free. The organization may be called not for, for profit, but the people who sit at the top are making six-figure salaries. And then they come out and they say, oh, but it's about the compassion. And if you're not compassionate, then you're, you're evil, obviously, and you're a bigot and you're a racist. And, and you, know, you wouldn't want this to happen to you. And then they go back to the bank and say, hey, here's another deposit. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have that put into my uh, retirement account. Uh, and I've got a great investment portfolio, too. We're dealing with a great deal of that. I mean, this, this, is, this is the point you have, to, you have to follow. There's a lot of money being exchanged when it comes to the misery of refugees and as well as many illegal immigrants. And there are a great many people who are making huge bucks off of it. Don't ever forget that. Ken Abraham, who is, as I say, he's writing for Citizens for Criminal Justice Net. That's the website. And he has this from a story. He said, in recent decades, many Western governments have increasingly outsourced prisons to private companies, claiming that doing so saves money. As the number of migrants and asylum seekers has grown, governments have found a new use for the private prison model that has become a multi-million dollar industry. The company Hero Norway runs 90 refugee centers in that country alone and 10 in Sweden, charging governments 31 to $75 per refugee per night. So you throw down a mattress on the floor. You probably have an old tick mattress somewhere. And you give them a, you know, a little stone soup. And then you charge 75 bucks for keeping them there for the night. Yeah, that's a heck of a markup, isn't it? We've got more coming up in just a moment. Bill Colley with you today on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. If you've got a comment or question about my opening segment, please feel free to give us a call following the break. 736 0300. 736 0300. Also, I'll tell you the story about a former congressman. He went to, uh, to a news conference on these issues in Rhode Island, and uh, the lefties nearly beat him up. Yeah, they are such peace-loving people. That's on the way this morning on Top Story. I wanted to share with you that uh, you can reach us again at number 736-0300. 736-0300. I've been talking about the refugee resettlement and I think a great many people try to lump everything into one category. Well, when, you, when you're looking at your opposition, if you don't take time to understand what they're opposed to, you just try to you want to villainize them and then say, well, they, they must all believe these things, which is, uh, which is a rather ridiculous way to come around an argument from the backside. 824, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. And uh, we've got uh, Kelton Hatch coming up after 9 o'clock this morning. He's talking about a, an event that uh, many of you sportsmen would probably be interested in hearing about, as well as Randy Staples at 840 this morning, talking about, well, perhaps some splits in the state, state conservative movement. Also wanted to tell you about our friends at Dream Room Design. I'll get to our callers in just a moment, but as the weather gets warmer, two days this week at least will be 60 or better. You are thinking sunrooms, likely. Many of you are. Enjoy your decker patio with no bees, mosquitoes, wind dust, and blowing rain and snow. It provides usable space year-round, operable windows with screens, and that creates a flow of air when you need it. And you can also close those to protect you from the outside elements. Each room is designed and engineered for your specific conditions. We specialize in building sunrooms, patio enclosures with many different styles to choose from. Now, uh, Dream Room Design, we should point this out too as well. The sunrooms can have glass or solid roofs or a combination of both. That's really up to the, to the individual, the homeowner. You can even have an enclosure 
over an existing covered deck or patio, converting it into a beautiful enclosed sunroom. And you have to go to dreamroomdesign.com, dreamroomdesign.com. See the great videos and testimonials they have there. We have a caller with us. You're on the air on KLIX. Good morning, Bill. Well, you know, we've had problems since the founding of this country. I should say when the pilgrims came here, uh, William Bradford, you know, wrote of a ship that was returning to England uh, with beavers skins to trade for supplies. They were well within the English Channel and then uh, almost inside of Plymouth. But then the, uh, they were uh, hijacked by a Turkish man of war and carried off to Morocco where the captain and the crew were made slaves. So Muslim pirates have been, you know, raiding the, the uh, coast over there and it carried away over a million to North African slave uh, markets. And uh, this English uh, Francis Knight, he, he wrote, I arrived in Algiers, the city fatal to all Christians and the butchery of mankind. Moroccan is, is Ismail had 500 wives, forced 25,000 white slaves to build his pass, uh, palace. And then, of course, in 1805, uh, Jefferson uh, got tired of playing tribute to the the, Bar the Barbary pirates. And uh, so he sent over the Navy with high leather collars, and that's why they call the Marines the Leathernecks, to clean out that situation over there in uh and well, clearly, clearly, you know, we've got a lot of people in the Muslim world who look down on anyone who is not Muslim and feels that they could treat us like dogs or worse. Well, here, the ambassador answered the question why these, why they were against us, and then, and he says here, the Quran says that all nations who should not have acknowledged Islam's authority were sinners, that it was their duty to make war upon them. And they've declared war on us forever. And this has been ongoing. So it's not just, you know, like to say all refugees, but those that follow the Quran are commanded to kill us. And now we've got these uh, people coming in here, or they're unvetted. And we're seeing uh, those that have been here for a while committing atrocities and so forth, like in San Bernardino. And, you know, People are tired of this stuff, and plus, yes. most of them are on welfare after they get here, and we take care of them, and they take our jobs that should be going to Americans. And I thank you for the call. You know, and people say, why do we see the rise of Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders? There you go. There you go. And the elites keep saying, no, 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 you racist dummies. You have to accept this. This is the right thing to do. When liberals keep saying, you know, well, it, it, you know, there's an old old sign. When I was a kid, I used to go to the bowling alley back home. Saturday afternoons, it was the most packed place in town because it had a great diner as well. I would go in and I would be sitting at a table with my dad and some of his friends, and up behind the counter, the coffee counter, was a sign that said, Working here is like wetting your pants in a dark suit. You get a warm feeling all over and nobody notices. That must be exactly how liberals feel when they try to tell us this is the right thing to do. Because it's like they're wetting themselves in dark clothing. They get that warm feeling, and then they're angry that nobody else notices. And yet, they continually tell us, you've got to do it this way. We know better. Why do you know better? Well, we, we, we appointed ourselves. We went to a lot of good parties, and everybody else at the parties patted us on the back and told us how brilliant we were. I'm reminded of Pauline Kael, the former film critic, following the re-election of Richard Nixon in 1972, and she's at a party, and she says to one of the other party goers, I don't know how he won re-election. Nobody that I know voted for him. Well, Pauline, you better get out a little bit more. The people who actually clean your toilet, mop your floors, scrub your walls, those are the people who actually make up the bulk of this country. And you liberal elitists, you may end up getting the paddling of your lifetime come election day this year. 8.30, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. NewsRadio1310.com, online, anywhere, all over the world. You can hear us live. And I do want to note, coming up in about 10 minutes, Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing. And then after 9 o'clock news, we'll have a few minutes with Kelton Hatch from Idaho Fish and Game.